Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at a uh, Corona motherboard. So this is a Corona with a 4GB module. As you see here, this is what I'm following. So unfortunately, my camera was kind of acting up. Um, but what I'm doing, what I already did was I removed the EMMC, which was giving me an error and I couldn't write a NAND to it. And I'm replacing it with a Hynix NAND chip. Uh, I pulled this from a Xenon. So essentially, you'll remove the EMMC. It's a BGA chip. I used a uh, hot air to remove it and I removed this from a Xenon console that I had that was dead. And I'm just soldering the legs back on. Um, there's a bunch of resistors on top and around this chip that you need to remove. So I'll leave a link to the guide I was following. Essentially, um, there's a bunch of 22 ohm resistors, a bunch of 10K resistors you need to remove on top. Then you need to replace them with a bunch of zero ohm, 10K and 100 NF resistors. These go all around the um, Hynix NAND chip and they also go on top where you would solder the pads for the 4 gig. Uh, you just have to remove and repopulate. Like I mentioned, I'll leave a link to everything down below. There's also a bunch of stuff you need to do on the bottom, kind of same thing. So right here, you're seeing me install a, um, I believe this is one of the 100 NF um, can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, I was basically looking at the guide. So like R1E4 is actually 10K and then uh, R1E8 is also a 10K. So like I was just following the guide and doing everything that you see there. Um, I have a little resistor book. I'll also leave a link to that. That might be useful. Has a bunch of links, a bunch of different resistors, my bad. Um, so these up here, uh, these were unpopulated. So you have to populate them with, I believe there's zero ohm resistors. Yeah. These are the row under, so from R1D1 to R1D8, you have to populate with 0 ohm and 10k resistors. And then there's a few up top that you're going to see me remove uh, ever so slightly. But yeah, that's kind of what we're doing today. Uh, once again, I apologize. My camera was kind of acting up and I didn't get voice recording and all that. So we're doing it after the fact. So once we got all the resistors done, I had to do two caps. So C1E8 and C2E9, which are 100 NF. These were slightly bigger than the pads, but it ended up working out just fine. This is the same thing. I think I got it from my resistor pack or somewhere else. Um, but yeah, once we're done there, not, now we have to move on to the bottom side. So the, the side with the NAND is the top, and then you literally flip the board to the bottom. And there's a whole bunch of resistors that you need to add. Uh, you need to install one cap. You need to remove a bunch of caps and resistors from the bottom. So first up, I tackle the, I believe it's R2, R1, which is a 2.2K resistor. This one's by itself. There's another resistor by itself on the other end, which is R1, R10, which is a zero ohm resistor. There's a cap next to the bank of resistors I'm gonna populate, which uses a 4.7 UF cap. And then there's a bank of resistors right next to that, R2T2, all the way to R2T13, that all require 10K resistors. From there, you have to remove a whole bank of resistors and caps. A bunch of 50K resistors are going, a 1K resistor is going, a 100 NF cap is going, a 4.7 UF cap is going, a 0.82 UF cap is going, uh, essentially, if you kind of plan this out properly, you can remove some caps and straight up put them back in other spots. But like this one, as you see here, I just had a bunch of caps. So I put that and now I'm going to put the whole line of 10K resistors. I kind of swap around from using hot air and my iron. Uh, I feel like in certain situations when you're doing a big row like this, hot air is kind of easier for me where I can just hit the whole area at once and just kind of move it around with my uh, tweezers in place. Um, but if you don't have hot air, you can clearly solder it down. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna power through this one.
All right, so I want to add something here. Um, I had the luxury of being able to dump my NAND, but not being able to write a NAND back. So what I was able to do here was since I had the four gig NAND, I was able to write it, get a get my CPU key, right? And then extract all the contents of that four gig NAND file to create a 16 MB NAND that I would write back. If you don't have the luxury to dump your NAND, you're going to have to create a donor NAND, write Zell, and basically kind of build a full donor NAND with donor KV, SMC, and all that. So in my case, I was lucky. I was able to read but not write. In other cases, you're not able to read or write, so you just can't do that. You'll just have to kind of, like I said, write Zell and build everything from scratch there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the NAND completely and then write back a hacked image, create a retail image, write that, and then do it again, just so I can have for my own records, a like clean retail image, and then a hacked image back. But that's what I like to do. So that's why you see Zell keeps going on and off in this uh, clip here, because I'm just doing that over and over to make sure I just have good dumps. And now that I verified Zell booted a bunch of times and the console booted perfectly fine, I'm going to start putting it back together and uh, that's going to be it. And while we do that, I would like to say thank you to today's sponsor, PCBWay, the premier destination for top quality printed circuit boards. In a short span, PCBWay has become the go-to choice for seamless online ordering, rapid prototyping and unparalleled customization. From hobbyists like myself to industry leaders, PCBWay has earned the trust through its commitment to precision and reliability. Cutting edge technology and a skilled team ensure that every PCB meets the highest standards. Beyond circuits, PCBWay fosters a vibrant community of creators turning ideas into reality. Join the innovation wave with PCBWay, where quality meets ingenuity. Alrighty, and here we are with the final product. So console's good to go. So this was the four gig EMMC module. Ooh, kind of crazy there. Uh, this little guy, so it's a VGA chip. So the video is all over the place. I actually started recording too late. Um, but as you saw, the process was swapping this out for a regular 16 MB. This is a, this is a Corona V4. I guess it's no longer a Corona V4. Um, it's now just a regular 16 MB Corona console. So we'll just boot Zell. So Zell will come up over here. Um, it won't say anything about the uh, 4GB, I guess. But I, I guess if you look, um, let's just get rid of that. Usually for a 4 gig console you don't get to see the um looking for the um 
you, you don't get to see this looking for files because you can't write in update flash um so that's one way you can tell and then the second way i mean this is just to show it working uh if i were to boot into dash launch it would also show it um but yeah it boots into the dashboard so the original issue i was having with the four gig module is it could find it but it couldn't i couldn't update the console normally i could read the nand but i couldn't write to the nand uh it just kept giving an io error so yeah we got it all sorted Everything's good to go. Kind of a fun, interesting project. Hopefully, it'll shed some light if you're doing your own Corona 4 gig uh, NAND swap since they are, these guys go bad. Um, and I don't see a point of trying to replace this with another one. So yeah, if you thought this was useful or interesting, leave a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, I guess. That's always useful. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, whatever that may be. See ya. Yeah.